The Honorable Paul Hellier from Canada has extensively studied extraterrestrials, or ETs. How many kinds of ETs exist in our galaxy? Probably in the whole galaxy or the, the whole cosmos, there are thousands. But most of them haven't got the, the capacity to come here yet, just as we didn't have the capacity to go there. They're, they're limited by their technology. Eventually, perhaps, they will have the technology to come in, in far greater numbers, as we will have, or are soon having, the technology to visit more planets and so on outside of our, uh, our own uh, planet. Extraterrestrials are real. Interview with the Honorable Paul Hellier, part one of two. Watch on to find out more. Greetings, warm-hearted viewers. I am Tung from vibrant Los Angeles, USA. People in my country are grateful for every loving action you do that benefits our Mother Earth. May God bless you. Welcome to part one of our two-part series, Extraterrestrials Are Real, interview with the Honorable Paul Hellier. On today's program, we'll hear from the Honorable Paul Hellier, a Canadian politician, aeronautical engineer, and internationally renowned unidentified flying object or UFO expert. Mr. Hellier is the former Minister of Transportation and former Minister of National Defense for Canada and is currently a member of the Canadian Privy Council. Mr. Hellier has conducted extensive research on extraterrestrials or ETs and unidentified flying objects or UFOs. He has spoken widely about aliens, with his talks being viewed millions of times on YouTube. He is one of the first high-ranking officials to state unequivocally that UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying over your head. On two separate occasions, Mr. Hellier personally witnessed a UFO. Three or four years ago, my wife and I were at uh, our place in the north country, about 120 miles uh, north of Toronto. And it's sort of a UFO belt. There's been a lot of UFO sightings up there. We were up there for Thanksgiving, and um, my wife said, I'm going out to look at the stars. And for some reason, I put on my cap and followed her out, which was most unusual for me. She said, oh, there's a, a, a bright sky and uh, a bright uh, star in the, uh, in the eastern sky. No, the western sky it was. And uh, I did a quick glance and I said, oh, there's a far brighter one in the eastern sky. And she turned around and we both were transfixed because this star, unlike other stars, was moving three or four degrees across the sky in three or four seconds. And I knew enough about aeronautics from my earlier years to know that stars don't do that. And uh, then when I got back to Toronto, I checked out, uh, could it be a satellite? No, nothing. Uh, space station? No. no. No explanation except the real one, which was, it was a spaceship. And it was moving so fast and doing funny things, you know, going across the sky and down and back and dipping up and putting on a show for us. So two nights later, I went out and uh, sat on the dock in a proper chair so I could back, and the UFO came back and did another show for me. So I watched for about 20 minutes, <laughs> and I've seen them, and uh, I know what they look like. Well, they have different sizes and, uh, and types of coming from various places, but I know their characteristics, and I knew that we didn't have anything that could do what they were doing. And so I was so pleased to be able to put in my book that, uh, you know, I'd seen UFOs in action. In 1977, Steven Spielberg's movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 
told the fascinating story of aliens visiting Earth. When a massive UFO lands on Earth, a group of American volunteers enter the ship to travel with them to their distant planet. Although the movie is fictional, Mr. Hellier says that a similar incident actually occurred. There's only one that I know of, and that is the expedition to Serpo. And this again was in the uh, in the mid '60s. The United States had uh, had connections with the people, the Ebens as they call them, from um, Serpo in the uh, Reta Reticuli constellation. So they suggested an exchange of people after they had got to know each other a little bit, and so. Um, one even was left in the United States, and 12 American astronauts uh, took off, first in a scout plane and then later in a mothership, to go to the home planet of these visitors, which was the planet Serpo. They had a very rough ride at the beginning in space until they got to a what was known as a wormhole. And after that, they, it was a nice flight. Imagine they went across what is, we consider 38 light years of distance in about 11 months. And this is what most people say is impossible. So nothing travels faster than the speed of light. Well, maybe it doesn't, but they got there in 11 months and the light would have taken 38 years to get there. So something is missing in the, your calculations as to how the universe actually exists. Well, they spent uh, several years uh, there and, uh, and reported back to uh, the United States on what they learned. Three decided to uh, stay there when the contingent came back to the United States, and five of them came back and uh, reported, and, and they had a documentation, thousands of pages of, uh, of reports as to what went on. And this was, I think, really the sort of uh, consolidation of the um, close association between the visitors from that planet and the United States government and armed forces. And even before the contingent got back, they even sent a scout vehicle that they made available to the United States armed forces to uh, learn how to uh, back engineer it and how, why it, how it worked and all of that sort of thing. Mr. Hellier says that for many years, extraterrestrials have been assisting governments on Earth. Their main objective is to help us to advance technologically. They had been working together on a small scale for a long time. And there, there had always been at least one working with the United States government or being close to the United States government from uh, the time of the crash in Roswell in uh, July 1947. There's always been at least one since. Of course, there are many more that started working in the uh, very top secret areas of uh, 51 and S4 and uh, and so on in Nevada and, and uh, Arizona, New Mexico, that area. Many working with them for years and years, developing the technical ability to build the ships and then finally to get them to fly uh, in space safely. So they've been working together for a long, long while. We'll now take a moment to step outside to gaze at the stars and look for UFOs, while we thank the divine for the many wonders in our universe. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our program. Extraterrestrials are real. Interview with the Honorable Paul Hellier, part one of two. Mr. Hellier tells us that in addition to the Evens, other extraterrestrials have visited Earth. There have been others, um, the tall whites as, they be, as they're known. Uh, have been working with the United States Air Force for a long time, and they've, they've been living in the uh, 
area in, uh, in Nevada. Several books have been written about them. They have been exchanging technology with the United States Air Force. And then, of course, uh, the Venusians made contact at least a couple of times, including uh, one early on, a valiant Thor, Thor, uh, who worked in the Pentagon for, we're told, four years, and uh, who uh, helped the, uh, the American forces, and who offered us, humankind, a real deal. He said, if you will give up your, your atomic weapons, we will give you all of the technology for you to have the good life in agriculture and medicine and all of these other things. We asked Mr. Hellier how many kinds of ETs exist in our galaxy and what they look like. They're all different. Most of the ones from our galaxy, I am told, uh, look very much like us. Consequently, they're the ones that could uh, be walking down the street and, uh, and you wouldn't know who they were. You'd walk right past them. You might even say good morning to them or something like that without knowing that they didn't come from anywhere in the world, England, unless they spoke, and of course you'd know the accent. As far as I know, and this valiant Thor was a handsome man, for example, and he could, he could pass for, you know, anyone. Then you have the Greys, who are the, the principal group that have been working with the United States. And they're very short, and they're very thin, they have long, skinny arms and legs. They have huge heads and huge eyes. So they're different. But there have to be far more than that. Probably in the whole galaxy or the, the whole cosmos, there are thousands. But most of them haven't got the, the capacity to come here yet, just as we didn't have the capacity to go there. They're, they're limited by their technology. Eventually, perhaps, they will have the technology to come in, in far greater numbers, as we will have, or are soon having, the technology to visit more planets and so on outside of our, uh, our own uh, planet. For more information on the Honorable Paul Hellyer, please visit paulhellyerweb.com. such fascinating revelations. Beloved viewers, thank you for your presence today during part one of Extraterrestrials Are Real, interview with the Honorable Paul Hellier.